I want to talk about this lecture and what I'm going to lecture on is really probably my favorite lecture of all. So you'll hopefully find this a treat. I enjoy this particular topic so much, it's almost become a bit of an obsession. In fact, it was an obsession for me for about a year in my life when I discovered that I was in love with a chess piece. And that chess piece is the knight. Before, I didn't care about it at all. It was just another piece. It was just a normal old knight, knights, bishops, queens, rooks, kings, no big deal. But at one point, I realized that the knight was the essence of chess strategy. The knight was that piece that mattered so much on the chessboard that it almost dominates all the conversations in chess. Now, not all the conversations, I should say, but the strategic discussions revolve so often around the knight itself. The reason why that is is because the knight moves differently from the other pieces. It's really just that simple. It's that quirky piece, and you know how it moves. I want to talk about this piece tonight and show some examples of what, what I became obsessed with this piece and some studies I created around this piece. And I'll tell you a couple of stories along the way. So take a look at this position here. It's White's turn to move, and White wins this game, but White doesn't win in, uh, it, it doesn't take, it's not only one way to win the position is what I mean to say. There are different ways to win, but the beginning of it is definitely the same. There's only one way to win. So I'll ask you to take a look, and it's a long path, so just tell me what you think um, the first few moves should be or at least the first move. Yes, Julie. Knight All right, knight f2 is forced. There's really nothing else to try, otherwise you lose your g-pawn. So now black plays, since white looks like he wants to get his knight into the game, white plays the move, sorry, black plays the move, king to e3. And now what should be played? Yes, Julie. Knight d1 is the only move to make any progress. If you play king to g2, what can black do? King f4. King f4. And white's back in, in some kind of zone. Black, white has to repeat the position. White has no choice but to go back to h3. And then black will just play king to e3. So we're starting at the top. Knight f2, king e3. Black. Uh, white is forced to play knight d1 check. And now black plays king to d2. And now, only one way to make progress. Gotta be b2. Gotta be b2. And now king to c3. Gotta be a4. King to b4. Knight b6, only move. And now we get to a crossroads, king to c5. And now white has a couple of choices here. Um, I'll play one choice. The other choice is possible as well, knight to see it. And finally, the black king cannot attack the knight. So this knight is headed toward this pawn, right? In some line, uh, this, this pawn is going to be in trouble. So black plays the move king here to start protecting this side. And now white shows a different plan in mind, knight to e7, king to e5. And now, knight to f5. Black is being threatened with what move? What is white's next move if black is not careful? What is the next move? Knight takes on h4 and have a winning pawn ending. So black has only one move right now. And what is it? It's the only one way to stop this threat. King f6 is the only move, right? Only way, so that you can bring your king in front of the pawn. Now white plays the next two moves. There are different ways, again, to win, but the simplest is to bring the knight back to d4. King can play to e5. Now play knight f3 check. And again, the threat is to take this pawn in addition to taking the pawn on g5. So the king has to go back again. And now what is the winning plan, now that the knight is sitting here? What should white do now? No, taking the pawn is a draw. Taking the pawn does not work, because as the knight takes, pawn takes, king takes, king goes in front, and this is a book draw. There's no way to win this position. Yeah. 
So taking the pawn would not be the right thing to do here, but what should white do? How does white win? Simple plan. Yes? Mm, King g2 is correct, but you didn't need to do all the extravagant stuff you, you suggested. The king has to stay attached to this pawn, so white has a very simple plan here. Bring the king around. Just bring the king around. This king has no choice. This knight is now guarding this pawn. This king was once relegated to guarding the, the pawn from advancing. Now it's free, so you don't have to worry about it. The king, this king has to sit. Just bring your king up, bring your king in. King over, and bam, and now you got to leave and give us your pawns, and the game is over. All right? It's a long-winded plan. What I like about this, what I find funny about this plan, about this position, is if we go back to the very beginning, the knight starts on this square h1. In order to win, white carries out, I believe it's a nine-move maneuver to go from h1 to f3, from here to here. It took, it took about nine moves to do before he found it. And if only he could move like a bishop just once, I just, let me just put it there, okay, now, I'll, now I win the game. But it had to go across the entire board to come around to get to this point. The knight move, the quirkiness of the knight move is what caused that to happen. You couldn't lose a tempo, you had to do it just this way, kind of strange. So I thought it was an interesting puzzle. I was like, okay, this is an interesting puzzle. So I'm in New York, just a couple of years ago, and I'm, I'm having a conversation with Gary Kasparov. And we're talking business about something totally different. And when we're finished, I said, oh, by the way, I, I just created a cute little puzzle. And I showed him the initial position. And he went through the position with, just like we just did, he was like, knight of two, that's the only thing you can do, and knight, 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 uh, okay. And finally, we get around to this kind of position, he says, yeah, but that's kind of easy, right? And I said, yeah, I guess it is kind of easy, because all the moves were forced. And so I left him that, that afternoon, and I went home. And, you know, you get, don't get the chance to give one of your puzzles to a former world champion every single day. And then to show him the puzzle for him to go, yeah, well, kind of easy. Right? You're like, gee, dude, you just poured cold water on my puzzle. So I wasn't feeling too good about that. So I started thinking about this puzzle and rethinking about the puzzle. And so I went and improved it. And I created this puzzle. And it took me about three hours to work out all the nuances of this puzzle. Three hours. I mean, I was working, there were subtleties. First of all, just thinking up the puzzle and realizing that it was valid, and then the time it took to check everything to make sure it was airtight. And what you're about to see is the work I put in to, to creating this puzzle, okay? So now, let's try to solve it again. All right, so you, so you already, Julian already, thought of a problem that's going to happen. So the move knight f2 is the same starting move. And now king to e3. And we are at a crossroads because those two pawns are on the board. We're at a crossroads. The move king to g2 is playable. Now knight d1 is the main line. We'll go into that. But the move king g2 is now playable. And the king goes back to f4. And now the knight can say, wait a minute, I can win that a pawn. So this is the first instructive ending we'll work out. What if I leave, well, we'll make a, this first this waiting move, put the king on g1, and the king goes up, and now the knight says, I'm going to go head off to that pawn. I'm going to rip that pawn off and win the game. You can have the g pawn. The problem is this, this king, black's king, is a hyperactive one. It can take the pawn, and then it can come back towards your knight. And as you're going now, you have this position, and you realize suddenly that this position is unwinnable. White cannot take the g5 pawn, and black's just going to shuttle back and forth. The white knight cannot move because of the pawn, and white cannot take the g5 pawn because of the h pawn, and you can't win the game. 
So black's king is just in time to take and to double back and create this position. So if we go all the way back, we get to this position here. And so king e3 must be answered again by the move we already know, which is knight to d1. But now king to d2, knight to b2, king to c3, knight to a4 check, king to b4. And we're at this point where we're supposed to play knight b6, but there's a pawn there. Except it turns out we can still play knight b6. Because you can't touch our knight because we will make a queen. Happy moment. All right. But the black king says, hey, wait a minute, but I'm over here. I'll win your pawn and get a passed a pawn. What's happening? So white says, OK, I'll give you the passed pawn. And I'll head to the other side, but let me start with this check. A very important check, extremely important moment in the game. White must not let black play king b5 for free. Because then the king walks out of the way of the, of the pawn, and the pawn goes down the board. So black must spend time playing the move king to a5. Now I have moves like king to b6. You may wonder, why can't you do this? Well, the problem with this is I play knight back. And as you try to go down the board, I grab this pawn. And then I just come back and stop this one. And you're way behind. And it's my g-pawn, my king, and everything, you're dead. So no king back helps. Right at this moment, black must play the move king to a5. You must help the pawn and restrict the knight. So now the knight plays knight to e6, king to b4, knight takes, and time to rush. Now we've got to deal with this pawn. This pawn is actually faster than ours. So now the knight plays back to f3, pawn up some more, and now knight to d4. Right? And uh, white is ready to check and pick off the a-pawn. OK? So black plays the move king to c4, attacking the knight. So what do you think white should do now? Well, against knight c2, we're going to play king to c3 and attack your knight. And then we we'll play king to b3 and attack your knight. Or maybe we play king b3 and attack your knight. Let's start there. We'll play king b3 and attack your knight against knight c2. So let's, let's include that move in the variation. Play king b3. Kind of annoying. OK, so this line is, we will explore the idea behind this line. But let's start in a more intriguing way. Let's start by leaving our knight alone. And some of you may recognize this variation from a very um, famous movie, Searching for Bobby Fisher position, where the pawn queens and check picks off the queen. Right? How many have seen the movie Searching for Bobby Fisher? And you remember this position he calculated. It wasn't this, it was this idea that happened, but not this position exactly. All right, so right here after the king attacks, we can push. Except black can now also push. Doesn't have to touch the knight. And now we play knight back, and black pushes, and you push. And now he plays king to c3, threatening your knight. Now knight a1, king to b2. Now g7, and we have the same line, king takes knight and queens. And now suddenly we have an interesting situation, which uh, my friend back here went, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> it's not so clear. This pawn is the drawing pawn, as we know, that this king can get out of the way and try to make a draw. But in fact, white is winning this position. So I'll explain to you what the issue is issue is. It is uh, black's turn to move. So black plays king b2. And now white starts to zigzag checks to get the, king clo the queen closer. Series of checks. And now this queen move that we know in this ending is very important to get behind the pawn. And after king here, queen checks. And black, not wanting to lose the pawn, plays king to a1. And black is stalemated on this side. Right? So that means white cannot play king takes pawn because it will be a stalemate. White can't just keep checking because it's not going to be of any use. So what is the correct move for white right now? White has a winning move right now. 
That is correct. King to g4, giving black a move. All right, so black uses it, h3. So now what does white do? Queen c2, keeping the black king buried. Black is one square away from making a queen, except he gets checkmated before that happens. All right, that took us all of 27 moves to prove that win from the initial position. 27 moves, all right? Nice ending, you, you might feel that's a nice ending. The knight marches all the way to, the, to one side from the corner on h1, goes to the other side of the board, goes to a square where it could be captured on b6, traverses the, the board to the other side to grab the pawn on g5, comes back to the other corner to a1, pawn gets to become a queen, has to do the zigzaggy motion, and then the move king to g4, and the game went, is over. 27 moves later, right? Took me three hours to spit shine that sucker, polish it off. I was proud of this one. I call up Mr. Kasparov. <laughs> I said, Gary, I have, a, I have an improvement on the position. I, we were, I was talking about the other business we had, which had to do with a chess building or something. And, I, and we talked about it, and I said, oh, I have improved the position. He said, what position? He'd already forgotten what I was talking I said, you remember the position I showed you earlier today? You know, he said, tell me. I said, the knight on h1 and the king on h3. And, the, and he said, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, right, what? So I said, well, now I'm adding a pawn on a6, white pawn, and black pawn on a7. OK? So we go all the way back, 27 move journey back to the original position. I said, I'm putting the pawn on a6 and the pawn on a7. So he goes, OK. And I said, yeah, so now it's white to move and win. And I'm going to show you exactly what happens. He's on the other line. I said, now it's white to move and win. This is what happens next. Oh, yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, right, you queen the pawn and king g4 at the end wins. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> What? <laughs> like, what do you mean? That's how it went down. I could not, I was like, it took me three hours, just do 10 seconds to assess the whole thing. How does that mind work? And we just got it. It's like, okay, I have to go over there, I have to take the pawn, I have to bring, I know I'm going to bring the knight back in, and, the, and oh yeah, that's the ending. Boom. How do you beat that guy? How do you beat those guys? That sick? Come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, oh, sorry. This wasn't the line. It's, uh, so it's, oh, yeah. You do this, 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 this. You do all of this. You go like that. You push this. You do this. Yeah, boom, boom. Oh, yeah. You do all this maneuver like this. And then, oh, yeah. You play King G4. In 10 seconds. Seriously? I mean, ridiculous. All right? Um, I show this position to Nakamura as well. I didn't show it to him. I actually put it on Facebook. And he saw it. And when he saw it, he also said, oh, yeah, that's pretty easy. I don't know how long if it took him 10 seconds to figure out what he needed to do. But apparently these 2750s and above or 2800 type people, they think differently from us mere mortal grandmasters down there. It's hard to impress them. OK? And, uh, and, and so I was like, gee whiz, wow. That sucks. So you know what that meant. Oh. I got to create a harder one. <laughs> I got to create something harder. Some people will respect, because gee, Kasparov is like, Poo, that's baby stuff. Nakamura's like, that's easy. What are you doing? So I said, all right, fine. I got you. Here comes the next one. So I created, and this one I think took me like two days. Obsessive. I'm talking obsessive. I created this position. Now, if you look at it, there's no more knight in the corner. It's still that same king and pawn set up on the right. But this time, the black king is healthy in the center of the board, and there's a c5 pawn. So black has more stuff to count on here. Right? Again, it is white to move and win. When you first put this into a computer to try to figure it out, th this I have to say I'm proud of, very proud. When you first put it in the computer, the computer thinks it's a draw. 
Now, it's definitely white to move and win, but it takes 20 moves. So the computer has to calculate da, 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 and take some time. After it's taken something like a minute, maybe, probably today it'll be short, shorter, it figures out after calculating billions of positions, oh, it's actually winning for white. But that's an achievement. When I showed this position to Kirsten Mueller, who's an endgame specialist for chess base, he didn't solve it, and he put it into the computer. And the computer at that time, a couple of years ago, took two minutes. And he said, congratulations. Usually every study, it just solves it. It just goes Bloop! winning. Yours, the fact that it actually stops and, cal and has to calculate all the lines means that it's a complex puzzle. So I was proud of that. Even though when Nakamura saw this puzzle, he also thought it wasn't that hard. Or maybe he was just pulling my leg. So it's white to move to win again. What do you think is the right first move? You should have a sense of what the right first move is by now. There's only one move, by the way. Yes. Knight d2. Knight d2 does not work. Knight d2 actually allows c4. And white's in trouble and, and maybe losing after that move. White is actually in trouble of losing this game because the king is frozen and the knight is guarding the c-pawn and the c-pawn is trying to become a queen. So black is like laughing at the white king and using the king and pawn to just go down the board. So white is almost desperate in this moment because c4 is coming. So white better play some good chess right now. Knight b6, back in business. Only move. All right? No, I knew what I'm going to do after that. But yeah, but it's a start. That was, we, we saw this move before in the other line, and it's back again. Knight to b6 with check. You can't touch the knight. OK? So black has different moves here. But black has to really be concerned about this pawn dropping off the board. So the king has many moves. Let's just inspect a couple. Uh, king d4 is one move. Knight c8, push. Knight takes pawn. And now you can't push. Because of, if you push, then knight b5 check, and you lose your pawn and the eight pawn queens. So after knight takes, you have to play king to c5 to stop the knight. So what now? Yes? Uh, knight c8 allows king to c, sorry, knight c8 allows c3, and I queen 2. Knight b5. Knight b5 anyway. I wasn't really stopping this move. Still play knight b5. And king takes knight, doesn't work. King has to go to b6. King has to go to b6. Push this guy. Stick him in the corner. And now we go get his pawn. And give us that, and then we just go run. We just eat him up, and that's it. It's over. All right? So that's clear. King d4 just doesn't work. There are other moves here after this first check. He could also play king e4. I didn't do anything with. King e4, we start the same deal. Knight in. He pushes. Give me this guy. He pushes. And I really like this one. Attack this one. He pushes. And then go in the square he was on. And when he moves, hide on the other side. And we caught the pawn. There's no place for the king to hide at all. Wherever he goes, this is going to happen. So back to this first move, knight b6 check. The best move for black is the logical one, king back to c6. And now what? You were the genius. You said knight b6. What are you going to do now? Well, the next move is kind of obvious. I meant the next move was kind of hard, but it should be clearer to you now what you should do. Knight c8. Knight c8, OK. All right, you attack the pawn. And now black plays king to b5, attacking your pawn. And now? A7. You dare not take a7. You dare not take a7. In fact, if you take on a7, you're losing after this move. Because now you have to respect this pawn. And this pawn is going to be a powerhouse. All right? It's just going to start going down the board. And, that, and you're going to have to deal with it. And once you deal with it, the king is going to march. and going to win your king and win your knight. And that's going to be the end of the story. All right? So you can't touch the pawn. Sorry. So like this is a variation, for example, that shows what's happening. 
too fast. The pawns are just too fast. The king and pawn organize too quickly. So here, after king to b5, white must play the move knight to d6 check and leave the pawn alone. And not only that, leave black to have two pass pawns. How scary is that? Now black, only because of deep calculation and nuances that took me two days to figure out, black has various moves. But let's start with the obvious. King takes on a6. 94. And now c4. Knight takes g5. C3. Knight back. Pawn up. Knight c5 check. Whoop! We made it. And this g pawn now becomes a powerhouse. And this knight on c1 can hold these guys off easily. So the end game is winning. If you don't believe me, king c4, knight c1, uh, a5, I take this guy. And you're just stuck for moves. My king and pawn are going down. Your king, whatever you do, this knight will just wait you out. Is that clear? Right? So for example, I mean, I just go like this. Even as you stop me here, I can just go like this, and then I just play. And whatever you do here, I'll just play around with my knight and, and wait until you suffer. You're going to get out the way at some point. OK? So that ending is winning for white. But that's not that interesting. What's interesting, if we go back to this moment, is black can play various moves here. Let's try king b6. Now knight e4, c4, and now we come to a, a critical moment. White can play the move and actually has to play one of these moves. But first, let's try knight takes on g5. After c3, white has no way of catching this pawn. White just, because of that subtle move that black played, white has no way of catching the pawn. You can try it, you can look around. There's just no way to catch the pawn. He's going to get a queen. So you play the most logical moves, and you just lost. But white has a sneaky move here. After knight e4, c3, white can play the move king to h2, just wasting a tempo, forcing black to change the position. Wherever black puts the king is going to be painful for him, guaranteed. You can guess at any move you want. But anywhere black puts the king is going to be painful. So let's start with king takes pawn, the most logical move. Now we take. And now when you push, now suddenly here comes the knight trying to stop you. And now knight c5, and guess who came back? And the reality is wherever you put the king, the same thing's going to happen. The b6 square was the only square you could hide. But other than b6, white will find some way to maneuver the knight. The tricky bugger is the knights. You know, they'll find some way to dance around and check you and bring back back into the game. Can you show king a5? Yes. So in this position, uh, you can play king to a5 instead here. That keeps him on the other color. That's what I'm trying to do. Mm-hmm. And I take. And you push. And this move is the most interesting move. Now I go here. And you push. And now I go here. And push and ask for a knight. <laughs> Wait a minute, what's going on here? Now we push, you come back, we push again, and now your knight cannot stop my pawn from becoming a queen. Incredibly. By the way, you should note, I put the king on h2. If the king were on g2, black would now play knight f4 check and pick off the pawn. And that's why we're on h2. The, main, the whole reason for playing king h2 was to avoid this check right now for black. If the king is sitting right here, it would be check and we take your pawn. So we had to realize that black could underpromote to a knight and put our king not on g2, but put it on h2. How sick is that? 
Yeah? That's sick. That's sick. OK? That is humor in chess. And that wins for white. Crazy. Crazy, man. I, I, I was stunned when I was looking at these variations. And you know, kind of accidental. So here, instead of king to b5, black also can play the move king to c7. And the same fight happens. Knight takes, king b6, knight back, king a6, knight c3, c4, knight e4, king to a5 again. Sorry, king b6 is also playable, I believe. King b6, and we're back to the magic move, king h2. Because b6 is the one square that we can't do the maneuver we need to do. So we need him to get off of b6 so that we can hunt his king down no matter where it goes. He's hiding on b6. The one geometric square in this given position that if we were to take the pawn right now, uh, king b6, sorry, king to b6, that if we were to take the pawn right now, c3, and we lose. We lose. There's no knight combination that figures out how to get at that king and fork the pawn at the same time. It just doesn't exist. So we have to make a waiting move in this moment. And again, the correct waiting move is king to h2. So that after the, now wherever the king goes, it's, it can't hide. Like, let's say it tries to hide this far away. How do we get it now? That's pretty far, actually. Maybe you can just bring your king over, and then they watch his over the Uh, yeah. But, no, no, you don't play knight c3. You bring, you can bring your king over. But hold on a second. There's something here. It takes push. Yeah, this line is another line worked out. That now it's that it is time to bring the king over, because because this knight is guarding everybody. That h pawn is under threat. This king is about to walk into the box of this pawn, right? Into the G, into the box of this c pawn. And once the king is helping out, and the knight can just come back, then everything is cool. So we win the game. Crazy ending, right? I mean, like obscenely crazy ending. All these nuances, all these king moves. I never got to show this one to Gary, but that would, be the, that would have been a conclusion to the story, a good one. But I'm afraid he might have gone, oh yeah, knight v6, and then, and then make a knight. And when he makes a knight, I don't think he would have done that to this one. No, I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. But there's another line here. Um, there's so many lines that begin with this move, king c6, knight, king b5. I know there's a line that I'd like to show. King takes a6. No, it's king to b5. Knight takes g5, a5. Yes. This time we get back to this position. Same deal. This, we remember this position again, an echo from the first one, from, from the second position we showed. So again, king can't take knight because of the same reason. So now a3, pawn up. And now king takes knight, push. You can, he makes a queen. You cannot make a queen, so you have to do this. And we do the same queen maneuver. Pick this pawn off, very important, and then do the same thing. And then king g4, and we win. After h3, queen c2. All right, 21 moves for this line. So we see the echo of this, like, it's, it's organic almost. It co it's connected. Chess positions are connected. A theme connected to another theme. The similarities start playing themselves out. And then when you play with this and you play around, then you get, you get to see the relationships of a piece to another piece, like the knight to the king. And you see a piece in its pure element, this knight and its ability to dance. It's when you have this kind of feel for a piece that you become a really good player. All right? So we'll hold that one. And we'll go to this next position. There's no additional story to this one. Now we get a lot of pieces on the board. So in my period, my feverish period of, of studies, creating studies, I saw this position, a similar position, in a Bruce Panofini book. 
And I decided the position was too easy, so I created a more complicated study. So this one is white to move and win. So I'd like to work it out with you guys. White to move and win. Uh, well, I'm sure I should have been training right away. But white to move and win, how would you win if you had the white pieces? So if we look at black's next move first, we realize that black's next move is to play what? B1 equals queen. B1 equals queen. If not B1 equals queen, what other move might black play? Black could play C2. If not C2, what other move could black play? Rook takes knight. Rook takes knight. So all these moves are interconnected, right? So white has to deal with B1 queen, C2, and rook takes knight at the same time. So white's move, first move, is pretty much forced. Knight takes B2. That's like, that kills two birds at once. The two things, two less things to worry about. All right? We don't have to worry about our knight, and we don't have to worry about C2, because they're both gone. So pawn takes. And now, there's a win hiding in this position. But where is it? And trust me, where it is, when you see it, you'll say, are you for real? <laughs> this is actually dovetailing off the idea from the Bruce Panofini book. And he got it from somebody's study. I don't remember whose study it is. But uh, it was study with colors reversed. Position is quite annoying. What's annoying is that the, the flaw in black's position is not apparent. It's, it's just, it's so sneaky hiding. The flaw in black's position is that the black rook on f4 cannot move along the file. That's the whole flaw. The black rook on f4 cannot move along the f file. See if that helps you to solve it. Still puzzled faces. A little bizarre, right? Not easy to spot why this is irrelevant. So I'll show it to you. The right move for white is rook b7. But you might say, well, he just gets a queen. Big deal. You take the queen. By the way, he had to get a queen because oh. I should point out that he had to rook b7. He had to get a queen because you were threatening to move rook to b3, and then you're going to take this pawn. So he has to get a queen. You take it. He takes back. Everything looks happy and even, except you now play rook to b3 check. He attacks your rook and pawn, looks like he's going to make his draw, and suddenly rook to b4. And his rook is trapped. That's it. Are you for real? Are you for real? <laughs> his rook is trapped, and after rook takes rook, pawn takes, he cannot catch your pawn. And if he tries to save his rook some normal way, like rook to e4 or rook g4, then you just trade rooks. And that's all she wrote. Crazy, right? Yeah. Crazy. To, the flaw in the position. To know the rook on f4 is the flaw? All along, that was what the whole ending was about. What's Nakamura say about this one? Uh, I don't remember if, I, if Nakamura had a comment on this one. But I trust it's too easy for him. <laughs> so how do you like that one? Pretty cool. All right, my next one, I think you've already seen, so it's not going to be good for you, Julian, uh, unfortunately. I, we showed you this one before. So let's just go to it so the rest of everybody else can see this. Wait a second. So we're back here. Okay. This position, it is white to move and win. White to move and win. Now, this is chaotic, I must admit. I created this position because I saw somebody else's puzzle. That happens to me a lot. I see a puzzle, I go, that's too easy. It's boring. And then I spend three hours proving that it's a better puzzle. And, it, that, and I should have just left it alone. And like, why did I waste my time looking at this for so long? But usually I come out with something that's pretty intriguing. And I learned something along the way. So in this position, it is white to move and win. 
The main idea is really pretty, the short variation. The win is not as pretty, but the main point of this is actually quite attractive. So I'll give you a minute to look at it and try to figure it out yourself. White to move and win. Okay, go ahead. Knight to g4, okay, oh, I take. Oh. <laughs> you missed knight takes rook and move one. That's not good, okay. And then you get all the way there. <laughs> that would be really nice. But it turns out that you are right so far. Now you need to involve the pieces on the left. Bishop to c3 check. And now we'll follow the main line. Bishop takes on c3. <laughs> and now we magically produce the rook on this side. We're not quite done. The king goes to g7, and now knight h6 check. Only way, the king goes here. Knight f7 check. Double check. The king goes here. And now there's a bishop waiting for you. Was it there in the original one, or did you? No, did I add the bishop? No, I did not add the bishop. It was there for the It's one of those pieces on the left you didn't think was important. Still want to figure out what that pawn is doing yet. That's got to be the key here. Okay, well, let's finish this one off. Yeah. It's white to move still. Why is oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, rook h8, queen, uh, bishop takes, and then knight h6 mate. And we got our mate. <laughs> okay. So that's the main line. I mean, that's, the, that's not the main line, actually. That's the main point. This is, this is when I complicate. This was the point of the tactic that I first saw. But it was just knight check, knight check, rook check, and then the, the knight mate. And I was like, that's obvious. Could we get a complicated one? And so I added these pieces on the board to, to create this, this extra drama. But little did I know I was creating more drama than I thought. Because after knight to g4 check, Knight takes rook. Bishop to c3 check. Black has another move. Excuse me? No, it's... Queen d4, bishop d4, then you take. So that doesn't... That ends up in the same mate, queen to d4. Queen g7. Queen g7 check. Counter check. Why is this important? Because after bishop takes queen check, which is forced, bishop takes bishop, Rook check, king over, we no longer have knight check. And we don't get a mate. The bishop is now back home defending the king. So now what? We're still supposed to win. Yes, you're, you're, <laughs> you're still supposed to win. That's right. It looks like, you know, now it looks like maybe we take the knight. But then he's going to bring his rook over and his bishop over, and this bishop will sacrifice itself for this pawn if need be, and leave you in a knight and uh, knight and rook versus rook ending, which theoretically is a draw, although some people have managed to lose it. Still, actually, most most notably, uh, the, US the U.S. Women's Championship, uh, Zatonsky defeated. Who did she defeat? No, no, I thought I thought it was. Um, it was uh, she played uh, um, um, Boloskaya, but Boloskaya lost. But I think it. No, no, no. This year, this year, uh, Anna Zatonsky defeated. Um, what? Wow, I can't remember her name. It was a Melchina. It was the it was the the, the the older woman in the competition. It's not her name. Is not Belaskaya. Camilla Baginskaite. That's her name. Baginskaite. Yeah, she beat Camilla in a long end game. It was a very sad ending. So, so yeah, so you can lose this ending, but theoretically it's a draw and no study is going to claim, oh yeah, by the way, you could win, so I'm going to be proud of this. No, I have to prove the win from this position. How, so this is, this is actually where the study gets truly complicated. The other pretty finish was just, just the intro. This was where the real study begins. You have to find, it actually is not that complicated, you just have to find the right moves to win. I know, right? It's like, yeah, so, so the Grandmaster says. Yes, Julian was actually able to find the, the very next move that White must play.
Anybody? Knight h6, I just take you with my bishop, and that kills everything. B6? No. I just bring my knight back. I play knight g3 and enter the fight and spoil your, spoil your position. There's actually only one aggressive move right now. Truly aggressive. Surprised you guys haven't thought of it yet. Rook H2. You're on H2. H7. <laughs> H7. Rook H7 is correct. Create a threat. And it's a big threat. It's a mate threat. You're planning to take the bishop. When he goes in the corner, go back with check. He goes back out and then mate him with your knight. Right? So what I mean is, if he brings this out, for example, you take this guy, you check him here, and then you mate him. That's the threat. That's a real threat. And the bishop cannot leave. Because then, let's say, sorry, uh, in this position, let's say the bishop just decides to waltz away, then we get a mate. So the bishop can't leave. So the bishop can't leave, and it's under attack. So what's black uh, going to do? Rook f7, except that is met by knight h6. Knight h6 check, forking the pieces. Forcing bishop takes, and now rook takes rook. And we're in this end game, having to evaluate. And the only reason we're going to win is because of this b pawn. Without it on the board, there's no win. Okay, so now we realize why that B pawn is sitting there. When I first created this study, I had a pawn on C7, and something screwed it up, and I had to take the pawn away from C7. Don't remember why. Well, that would be hard. Rook H7, take one away. I'm sorry. Well, it's yeah, but when rook versus rook versus right. bishop or knight is also a draw. Well, well, right now it's black's move. Oh. So black could play bishop e3. Unfortunately for black, that is meant by rook to e7, threatening the bishop and mate. And if you go here, then a check, and then bam, and that's the ball game. And now we've solved the puzzle. Crazy enough? Easy, right? So yeah, I know. I'm just kidding when I say easy, of course. So the position started here which looks a hot mess, and you got a clean line to here, which is kind of obvious to look at when you get to it. Chess is, chess is a really interesting game like that. Really interesting.